when we look at Glencore and we look at the share price, uh, this calendar year, the share price at one point in time was up 100%. Uh, that made it the third most impressive FTSE 100 equity out there. So Alistair, recently Glencore's half yearly shares and results came out. So can you talk us through the outcome? Well, I think the market reaction was uh, certainly negative to start with. Um, there had been expectations that uh, Glencore would be able to tackle their debt mountain a little bit more successfully. And I think there's been a bit of a underwhelmed aspect as far as markets have uh, taken that on board. It is worth noting that it's all not, not all negative news, certainly as far as the uh, uh, sales of uh, commodities and assets are concerned. They are ahead of schedule. The targeted four to five billion that they were looking to sell off, they've already done about 3.8, 3.9 billion. And you're right that it has been a difficult year for commodities. So how did markets initially react once the news came out? Well, I think uh, when we look at Glencore and we look at the share price, uh, this calendar year, the share price at one point in time was up 100%. Uh, that made it the third most impressive FTSE 100 equity out there. And when you consider it's a mining stock and what the competitors uh, were achieving or not achieving in the case, um, I think that there was probably uh, an anticipation of a bit of profit taking, uh, certainly overperformance as far as the shares were concerned in the short term. That being said, as far as the recovery cycle is concerned, Glencore started the sales of many of their assets and the restructuring of their management long before the likes of, say, BHP Billiton or Rio Tinto. So they are quite a bit further ahead of the curve in comparison to their competitors. And they're still leading the way in terms of their competitors as well. They are, uh, certainly as far as the comments and phraseology that came out of the company uh, were concerned when they posted their figures, uh, they were also talking about the possibility of reintroducing dividends. And that makes them much further down the road of recovery in that stage of the cyclical recovery than many of their competitors. Now let's take a look ahead at what some of the struggles that Glencore still have to overcome. So they've recently in 2011 become a London listed company. Now could the Brexit aftermath have an impact on Glencore in the future? Certainly as far as their IPO price is concerned, the current levels with which Glencore have been trading in the last few weeks are considerably lower, even with that 100% improvement in their share price over the course of this calendar year. Uh, as far as their quote in London is concerned, it's an aspect that many companies will have to tackle. It is still an unknown quantity what the full consequences of the Brexit will be. It's worth remembering that London is a very mature market when it comes to raising funds and a pretty educated market as well when it comes to the ability uh, to absorb and finance businesses. Short term, I don't see the likelihood of Glencar, Glencar moving their quote away from there. It's worth remembering as well. They also have a quote in Hong Kong too. So they do have other options available to them. And 2015 was a difficult year for China, but 2016 has seen a bit of recovery. So has that had a positive impact also? Tail end of 2014, we were all worried as to the consequences of where China were going to be, uh, a cooling off of their economy, and it was very much envisaged that China was going to be the, the real issue in the following year. That hasn't really materialized. In fact, the world's economies have had so much to digest, whether it's Brexit, whether it's US elections, or many other aspects out there, uh, disasters across the world as well have played their part as far as uh, equity markets are concerned, that China has quietly, in the background, rather impressively, managed to just get on with things, continue to cut some of that red tape, which is their version of stimulus, as opposed to, say, quantitative easing that we get in the US and the UK and the Eurozone. Um, and they're quite Quite frankly, a little bit better than everyone anticipated. Maybe their appetite for commodities isn't fully back up to the growth levels we've historically seen, uh, but I think they're certainly better than people feared they were going to be at this time of the year. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights. Thanks for having me. Well, that's all from us here in the Geneva studios, but for all the latest updates and exclusive market moves, do keep clicking back to Dugascopy TV. <laughs>